In our busy world, family time frequently gets neglected. It is vital that we give attention to our families while we can, and it is especially important to give attention to what God says in His Word about our homes. For the next few minutes, let's join Scott Pauley as we open the Scriptures and find God's message for your family. Several years ago, my wife and I had the privilege of teaching a married couple's Sunday school class every Lord's Day, and what a great time we had with those couples uh, over a period of, I don't know, two or three years, I guess. And uh, at one juncture in our time together, we decided that every Sunday we were going to highlight or spotlight a different Bible couple. And so I challenged our class, and I said, let's try to discover as many couples, married couples, given in the scriptures we possibly can, and something we can learn from each of them. Well, that was fascinating because there are many that stand out, of course, Adam and Eve and Abraham and Sarah, uh, but there are some that are, are lesser-known couples of the Bible, and yet what a profound uh, impact they had or an illustration of some truth. Uh, for example, in the Old Testament, you have Hosea and Gomer, and uh, what a picture of divine love, of forgiveness and restoration. And so that's just an example, but uh, Scripture's full of them. And uh, some positive examples, some negative examples, but all of them given to us for some reason. Well, in that study, uh, Tammy and I identified one couple that really became our favorite couple, and uh, a couple we enjoyed reading about, studying about, talking about, and sharing with others. And I'd like to introduce you today to our favorite couple. Could I do that? I've had a lot of great couples uh, in my lifetime who've impacted us, people who have deeply, deeply encouraged us and instructed us, and the folks that we've admired, friends we've enjoyed introducing to others. But I can't think of a couple I'd rather introduce you to today than this couple. We are first introduced to them in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter number 18. And here's their story. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So here we have their names. This is the first mention of this couple in the Bible. The husband's name is Aquila, and his wife's name is Priscilla. I think they are one of the most neglected couples of the New Testament, and I say that because we find them repeatedly throughout the New Testament. We're introduced to them here in Acts chapter 18, but they show up in Romans chapter 16, verse 3. They show up in 1 Corinthians 16, 19. They show up in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 19 at the end of Paul's ministry. Uh, this is one of our favorite couples because this is a couple, I believe, that is a testimony of real faithfulness to one another, faithfulness to God, and faithfulness to the work of God. Could I point out what town they lived in? They lived in Corinth. You remember anything about Corinth? Corinth, of course, was known as a carnal place. It was known as a city full of debauchery and wickedness, immorality, and this is striking to me. When we're introduced to this couple in Acts chapter 18, they're not only of the same craft, they're tent makers, but they're also of the same faith. Because when you read on in Acts chapter 18, you discover that Aquila and Priscilla were true believers. So don't miss the most obvious thing. It is possible to have a Christian home in a wicked place. They had a Christian home in Corinth. And I don't know where you're living today, but I do know the generation we're living in, trying to raise kids in, and someone says, it's impossible, it's so wicked. Oh, no, my friend. In the most wicked places, it is possible to be a Christian, to follow Christ, and to have a truly Christian home. I would also point out that Aquila and Priscilla were one of the keys in the early church. You're going to find in our study of this couple that they were a tremendous support. They were co-laborers. They were helpers. Now, these were not... Uh, uh, pastoral people. The, the, this was not an apostle. 
This was not someone even known as a deacon that we know of in the church. And yet, without couples like Aquila and Priscilla, Paul could never have accomplished what he accomplished in so many of these places. I am convinced and convicted that strong churches are made up of strong families. And if our churches are going to stay strong and the work of God is going to go forward in difficult days, we have to work on our homes. We have to say, you know, I may not be the pastor, but I can help the pastor. And I may not be the most visible person, but I can do something for the Lord and for his glory. Aquila and Priscilla are not famous, but they made a difference. I believe they're famous in heaven. In fact, I'm convinced that many of the anonymous souls here on earth are going to be the ones at the judgment seat of Christ that are most greatly rewarded. We love to talk about the Apostle Paul, but behind the Apostle Paul, there was this couple known as Aquila and Priscilla that Paul's going to testify made a tremendous difference in his life and in his ministry. I want to to encourage you, dear listener, that whoever you are and wherever you are today, you can make a difference right where you are. You see, Aquila and Priscilla lived in one of the most wicked cities in the Roman Empire. Uh, They lived there at a time of great difficulty as well, I might add. For example, did you notice the the parenthesis in Acts 18, verse 2? How did they get to Corinth? It says that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Now, we read that and go right on. We think that's just information. Oh, no. Do you know that this was a reference to the persecution of Jews going on at that particular juncture, do you realize that Aquila and Priscilla were themselves enduring and uprooting? They'd been displaced. They'd been moved, not of their own volition, uh, but because of circumstances. And maybe your family has been uprooted. Maybe something in your home, not geographically, but something has changed. And it's not something you would have chosen for yourself. It's certainly not something that you would have picked And, uh, oh, how easy it is to grumble and complain and see the worst in it. But have you seen God in it? You see, they would never have met the Apostle Paul if they had not been moved. They would never have crossed paths with the great apostle and gotten connected to what was going on in this missionary journey if it was not for the divine providence of God in these circumstances. You have to see the Lord even in your difficulty. Even when all the Jews are being kicked out of Rome, God is ruling the good and overruling the evil. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and he turneth it whithersoever he will. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so I introduce you to my favorite family, our favorite married couple, Aquila and Priscilla. I'd like you to do something before we continue our study. I'd like for you to read through Acts chapter 18. Read through Acts chapter 18, and then look up the other references to Aquila and Priscilla throughout the New Testament. Romans 16, verse 3, 1 Corinthians 16, 19, 2 Timothy 4, 19. And when we return to our study, I want to give you some very practical things that this this couple did to make a difference right where they were. There are things all of us can do right where we are, things that we can apply. Isn't it interesting that of all the married couples in the Bible, this married couple is mentioned in four different New Testament books under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It seems like this is one of God's emphasis to us, and I want us to learn all we possibly can from their example. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person that you put in Scripture and every person that you put into our lives. I thank you for every truth you're seeking to teach us at this moment. And I pray now for every couple and every family listening to me, whatever their difficulty, wherever they're living, and whatever's facing them, I pray you'll help them to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might today. Help us to learn all we can, and then help us to live what we're learning. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope that you will spend some time talking with your family today about these truths from God's Word, and spend time praying for each member of your family. You may find additional podcasts, helpful articles, full-length Bible messages, and other resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Until next time, may God bless you and your family.